Welcome to Father's Heart Digital Church, and that's uh, Saturday night, and we're going to be able to get, get together tonight just to be able to share God's Word and to just edify ourselves and encourage us in the Word tonight. So I've got an exciting word for you tonight. I believe it's a word that will educate, uplift, um, and also edify you and bring you into a place of victory in Christ. So while people are busy signing on, people coming online, let's uh, just commit this time to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Amen. So let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity this evening to be able to come together to share your word once again, to be able to learn from you, Lord. We know and understand that meditating on your word is critical, it's vital in our lives, Lord, to be able to build us up and to, to, to bring us to a, pla a stature and a place in you that we can do what needs to be done and lift up your body, Father. So, Lord, we tonight... We thank you that your word is true, yea and amen. It's the rock, it's the foundation upon which we build our lives. And Father, it's also a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And Father, we acknowledge the power of the word of God in us, working through us, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So awesome. My name is Pastor Leslie Hissel. Uh, I'm going to be presenting a general teaching tonight, which I've, I've titled, Can You Influence the, uh, um, the Outcomes of in your life can you influence the outcomes in your life so i put that down tonight as a title for this particular message and i want to focus on two things tonight one is what we think about and two what we speak about those two things are vital and critical in a believer's life to be able to bring us into a place of victory i don't think people always understand how important is what you think about people who don't understand how important is what you allow to come out of your mouth because the Bible even tells me, the book of Timothy, it tells me that this little tongue is evil. It can, it's, <laughs> it's so small, yet it directs your life. Because just like a rudder directs a ship, so this little tongue influences where we go. In the book of Proverbs, in chapter 23 and verse 7, there's a very interesting scripture that says, um, As you think, so you will become. That's my, my uh, uh, paraphrasing of it. As you think. So you will become. So our thought life and what we speak and what we declare are two vital factors in every single believer's life. In the word of God, we also understand, according to Psalm 1, that we need to meditate on the word of God day and night, verse 3. We also now understand from Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, that it also encourages us to, to, to meditate on that word because it influences what we think. And then if we look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, it also tells us what we need to meditate on and what we need to think about. So the Word of God takes, it, takes thinking seriously. And it takes our mind and our intellect seriously. And we need to understand that because where those things influence the way you and I live our lives. And it influences whether we can or do overcome in circumstances and situations that face us on a daily basis. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, the Bible talks about, I set before you life and death. Choose life. So there again, the word of God encourages us and tells us what we need to, to choose and that we need to get life into our thinking and the way that we talk. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, sorry, but of power um, and a sound mind, and that word sound mind is also interpreted in some verses as self-discipline. So we need to understand then that it's critical and it's vital that we start looking at our thinking on a daily basis. Where, What do you think about? What, what do you allow to come into your mind? Because in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and it's around about verse 5, I think it is, the Bible speaks about the fact that we need to take thoughts captive um, that raise themselves up against Christ. And so therefore, it is, it is possible for us to control and manage our thought life. And we need to do that. But now, let me just back up a, a, a step or two. When you and I are born, we are born with a sin nature. Every human being, the Bible tells me, we are born with a sin nature. Therefore, our minds are not automatically renewed and we're not going to automatically want to think about the things of the lord want to be able to do the good things want to be able to go forward in that particular vein or line so therefore 
there has to be a heart change in us because the bible tells me my heart is where my treasure is that you find in the book of matthew so wherever my heart is that is also where my treasure is going to be and i need to be careful where my heart is going to go and where my treasure already exists so the first thing that needs to be done is that you need to develop a new heart how do we do that? Because the Bible says that we are born with a sin nature and we know that the wages of sin is death and therefore it becomes an issue and a problem. So how do I get my thinking sorted out? How do I get my heart sorted out? The first thing is that we need to become born again so we can become alive unto God so that there's a new input into our lives and into our hearts. So therefore, we surrender to God through His Holy Spirit. And by His Holy Spirit, He will then come in and He will start working from the inside out and start helping us to renew our minds. We find in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 that we need to renew our minds. We see the same thing repeated in the book of Ephesians in chapter 4. That we need to have this mind renewed. So the way that we think needs to be altered and changed. So to get that going, to get that process going, we need to first and foremost become born again. We need to receive a new heart. We need to allow the Holy Spirit into our lives. And as we allow Him into our lives, He can start influencing as we surrender to Him our thought life, our intents, our hearts, our attitudes, um, our desires, the things that we run after. All those things can be influenced by God. Without God in our lives, without the Holy Spirit actively involved in our daily living, that's going to be a very difficult task to accomplish. So that is the first step. The first step is a relationship between you and God needs to be established so that God can get entrance into your life. So the Holy Spirit can start doing a work in your heart and he will start changing your heart as to where your treasure is going to be. Our discipline then that we have to bring, our side that we bring to the story, is that we have to, whenever our thoughts raise up, as I said to you in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, every single time our thoughts start deviating and going into directions <coughs> excuse me, that are not godly, that is not from the Lord, we need to then take those thoughts captive and cast them down. How do you do that? You have to get to a place where when your thoughts come up, you verbalize and say, Lord, I do not accept these thoughts. I will from this moment forward take them captive. I cast them down. I subject them to the Spirit of God. So you make a verbal confession and you'll find that that becomes a, it will become a victory in your life and it will become a, a battle that you have won. That's how I found in my life to, to get my talking, to get my speech, to get my declarations, um, the things I, I talk just in general conversation, to bring them in line with the Word of God. Because whenever I caught myself um, saying things that are not maybe scriptural, um, where I come into agreement with Satan rather than with God, um, I can take those thoughts captive and I can bring them down and I can present them to God and ask Him through the Holy Spirit to help me to not do that. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 then, which I quoted or mentioned a bit earlier on, that um, scripture also gives us direction as to what we need to think about if there's any good report, if there's any value, if it's, it's true, if it carries on. And those things are things that we meditate on. And obviously the Word of God falls into that category and therefore we meditate on the Word of God. One of the things that I do still even to today after many years of salvation is to memorize Scripture because memorizing Scripture and repeating Scripture to yourself is a very effective way to get the Word of God into your mind and to get your mind renewed so you can get to a place where you've got your, 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 your heart focused on where your treasure is. Okay, so first of all then, a new heart. We get that by being born again. We allow the Holy Spirit in and He can start doing a work in our life. Point number two. There's a scripture in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 which says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. There's a key in that chapter. There's a, oh in that verse, sorry. That seek, seek ye first. There's a, there's a firstness. We have to, above everything, make it a focus of first seeking God's kingdom. Now, when we say seeking God's kingdom, that is a very broad statement because seeking God's kingdom could be in all facets and areas of um, our lives because the word of God has got comment and has got input in absolutely everything that you and I do. doesn't matter what, what aspect of life it may be. 
the word of God will, will have an opinion or word that he can speak into, wisdom that he can bring into that particular domain or area of your life. So therefore, we seek first the kingdom of God. Secondly, that indicates and tells me and you that it also makes it, uh, uh, sorry, it um, sets our priorities. What is number one? What is first? What comes first? We do not go after things that are, are to satisfy us and our lusts and our desires and our things, but we go after things that will, that will satisfy God. Things that will, will build His kingdom. Things that will grow His kingdom. So that tells you and I again that there's a discipline that needs to come into you in my life. That if we want to get our minds right, we have to come to a place where we focus on God first. The things of the kingdom of God first. Righteousness first. Now we do understand the scripture says that we made the righteousness of God in Christ. We know it's a free gift according to, to Romans um, 5. We understand all that. But there comes a sanctification process in every believer's life where you have to work out those things in your life. Your own salvation you have to work out. So there, there is a discipline that's come, going to come. God is not just going to override absolutely everything and enforce His, his decisions and stuff in, in our lives. That's not going to happen. There comes a surrender from you and I. There comes a pressing in, a desire, a want to, to get into the things of God and to push in as deep as we possibly can to get this mind renewed. So we've got to get this mind then thinking on the things of the Lord. We've got to start thinking about the, 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 um, the passion of God. What is, what is God all about? What is His character? What is His purpose? What is His desire? What does He want to accomplish here on earth? All those things become a critical aspect of our, of our motivation and our attitude and the way that we conduct ourselves and the way that we live our lives. Because God becomes number one. He is the first. We follow after Him. His will will be done on this earth according to the Lord's prayer. So we seek His will above everything else. Our will comes second. Our will is not a priority and it's not number one. His will is priority and His will is number one. So therefore, there's a surrender then and a submission to Him. So now, we then come to a place where the Bible explains to us that the, the Word of God, Scripture... There's a washing of the word. You find that in the book of John in chapter 3. It talks about the washing of the word of God. So we need to understand that as we allow the word of God entrance into our life by meditating on the word, thinking on the word, spending time on the word, that there's a cleansing process that takes place in your and my life, in our thinking, in our desires, in our passions, and what we meditate on on a daily basis. Now, as we do that... We lay up for ourselves treasure, all right? And where our treasure is, our heart is also. But now there's the progression, the going forward. Because the Bible tells me out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will now speak, all right? So our speech, that which we declare and speak on a, on, on, on a, on a daily basis, is influenced by all that treasure that we have been loading into self and getting our minds focused on and our hearts focused on, and that's going to influence what we declare and what we speak out of our lives. People do not realize and understand the importance of words. Because as we saw in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, as you think, so he is. All right? Because as you think, those thoughts establish your treasure. Your treasure then becomes, the more and more you load into your heart, your heart becomes a reservoir. And as your heart becomes a reservoir, when you speak, your speech will, will, will betray you and it will expose what's inside of you and who you are. That's why whenever I, speak, I come into the presence of people, um, I like to not speak too much, especially in the beginning, purely because when they speak, within five to ten minutes, they will already start portraying everything that's inside of them. They will start exposing themselves and showing themselves by what they say and what they declare. And you can learn a lot about a person and their attitudes and their heart and where they're going and what they desire, what's important, what's not important, by just listening to what they say. So from the abundance of the heart then, the mouth 
speaks according to Matthew, I think it's uh, chapter 12, around about verse 43. So it speaks then about that abundance that comes out of the hearth. We declare it, we speak it, and as it goes forth, it starts shaping your destiny and it starts shaping your environment. So therefore, the title of this particular teaching tonight, can you influence the outcomes of your life? I personally, I'm of the conviction, and I believe very strongly that, um, that we are in a place in our lives that we, we declare, everything we say, everything we speak, everything that comes out influences what happens in our lives. So therefore, you have to start now declaring God's word into your circumstance and situation. That is why it is vital and is critical that believers... Um, and I know it's something that's been lost. It's something that people don't do so much anymore. But it's something that needs to come back where people take the scriptures and they learn what the scripture says about specific topics. All right. There are too many believers whose faith now gets affected and influenced because they do not know what the word says about certain topics. So let's look at one of them. Um, let's talk about healing tonight. What does the Bible say about healing so i can illustrate and show you how important these things are the bible tells me according to first peter 2 24 and also isaiah 53 it talks about this fact that by the stripes of jesus we are healed we also know in, in the book of peter they sent out the elders to lay hands on them and they, were, they would recover and we also know in the book of psalms it talks about the jesus sent his word or the, or the word of god went forth and healed them. So we understand and know that there's numerous ways that words can be used and also prayer and laying on of hands and scripture itself that God wants every single believer to walk in perfect health. So therefore, the standard is perfect health. All right. So that's what the what the Bible teaches us. It tells us that God wants us to not suffer from sickness and disease. But the truth or, or what is manifest in the world is that many people are afflicted by sickness and diseases because we are living in a world where there's still a devil around. He's still um, out to destroy and kill and steal, as the Bible tells me. So therefore, we need to understand that that devil is still around and he's still got an agenda to destroy and to kill and to steal. So now we have to start in bringing in the word of God. We have to start by faith, believing what God says. So what happens now? We have to memorize and learn and meditate on those scriptures that talks about God's healing power. As you and I meditate and read and, and think about those scriptures, mull them over in other words. As we do that, those scriptures will go settle down into our heart. And as they settle down, we are loading treasure into our lives. So that when the devil comes and he attacks you and I, the standard that we are raising up is a standard that God wants us to walk in perfect health. So therefore, that is the standard. Anything below that is not God's standard. And therefore, we can trust God to come to that place. So therefore, now we, we build up that treasure of word inside of us. Now we get to a place where some kind of sickness or disease attacks our body. All right. And the symptoms are there. Everything is there. And we have a choice now to make. So either we're going to now invoke our faith and start saying, Lord, we declare your word over this particular circumstance and situation. And that is that your word says by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And uh, I'm going to get the elders to pray for me. And I'm going to believe that by the laying on of hands, I receive my healing and I'm going to stand on that word and I'm going to choose to give you first place in my life to be the author and the finisher of my faith. All right. And that is the first thing we do. So in other words, we're running to God, seeking first the kingdom of God. So we're running to God and allowing him to have the entrance. Now, if you've got strong faith, all right, you and I can stand on that word and we can trust God. And we can say, Lord, I don't care what comes. I'm standing on your word. I don't care what my circumstances. I don't care what the symptoms declare. I don't care anything. All right. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Now, 
I can give you testimonies of, of what's happened in my life. I can give you testimonies of what happens, happened in my family's life. And on numerous occasions, there has, we have received miracles in our bodies. All right. And we have not had to go to doctors or to medicine. God has been faithful and he's come through and he's healed us. Has it always been instant? No, it hasn't. Sometimes it's been a battle. There have been, there have been occasions where it's taken over months. Some of them have been over years. And actually, there's some, some instances that took very long. But we stood on God's word. Now, if it is a situation where you stand on God's word and, and, and this thing is, is tough and it's difficult and uh, you need to get the victory over it and it's not coming through your faith, there's nothing wrong with God using doctors to help you to be healed. All right? All the plants and everything that's out there and all the stuff that they use for, for us uh, to make up the medicines and whatever is developed by God and provided by God anyway. So there is no issue with going to a doctor and, and allowing him to help you if you are not able to faith it out. All right? Nothing wrong with it. Nobody's going to condemn you. Nobody's going to criticize you. Nobody's going to come up against you. But if that should happen... All right, and you get your victory through taking medication, that's fine. But next time it happens, then invoke your faith again. Give God first place in your life and allow Him to come in to do the work. And you will find that your faith will grow. Your faith will increase. Your faith will multiply to a point where you can then stand strong in your faith in God and be victorious in trusting Him to be the healer in your life. And that is how the process then goes. So during that time, what you and I have to be careful of is the words that come out of our mouths. Because that which we convinced and convicted about inside of us, that which we believe, is what should come out of our mouth. So um, there was one instance where my wife was, was at a, 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 an attack on her body and it was a bad situation. We fought that thing for eight months. But there came a day where we said, Lord, now we don't understand after eight months why we still haven't, don't have the victory, why we still haven't got through this. But in that eight month period, we could not at any point let our faith go or allow our confession or the words that came out of our mouth to contradict that which we believed. So we said, by the stripes of Jesus, we, she is healed and God is going to, going to do a miracle and he's going to bring her through. So any kind of long story short. She went to the doctor and she, they admitted her to hospital and they were doing the tests and doing what they needed to do. And to, to, to help her overcome the situation would have required an operation. But she had to sign all the consent forms and everything to get the operation done and whatever. But as, she, as they were doing the final, final test before they were about to, to do the operation, suddenly everything went negative on the tests. In other words... Everything for the last eight months that have said, listen, you're sick, the, 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 everything that's happened in the body, everything that needed to be taken care of, suddenly in a split second, everything was reversed. The doctors could not believe what they were seeing because now the tests are contradicting absolutely everything that happened before. And um, God healed her instantly at that particular moment in time. Now, I can't explain that. I can't tell you why it took that time. I can't tell you why God did it the way he did it. All right. But I can surmise. And I, I don't know. One day when I get to heaven, I might ask God and say to him, listen, I need, I need you to clarify this particular one for me. But in that time, I could not let our faith go. And even when my wife was about to go into the theater for the final test and before the operation was done, even at that point, she said, Father, I'm trusting you. I'm believing you. I don't know why we're at this point, but we're still standing on your word. We're still believing you. So, you know, I can hypothesize about it. I can think for reasons. And one of the things that came up in my heart was that, that maybe there was somebody that had to witness a miracle. Somebody maybe in that theater room that day had to see a miracle. And maybe my wife was the one that was going to be the person who God was going to use to reveal himself to somebody else. I don't know. And it's not for us to know, because we are submitted to God. God does not have to ask my permission. God does not have to come and, and explain to me before He does anything. I have already submitted myself to Him. I am His child. I follow Him. I, 
I know what the word says and declares about the concept of healing and the principle and the doctrine of healing. So therefore, I know what the word says I have. And I can stand on his word by faith and I can, I can release my faith to see that come through. So we have to, in our lives, put God first every single time. There cannot be a time where we do not put God number one. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So that is in our personal lives. That is in the kingdom of God. That is in absolutely everything we do, we do. And every way we live our lives. And by doing that, we allow God entrance. We allow God to be part of our lives. And our lives become a testimony unto people round about us. Because we are a vehicle in the Father's hands. All it is, is that you and I have got to get our thinking sorted out. We've got to get our mouths and our tongues sorted out. So as we declare and speak the word of God, we do it by faith, trusting God that he's faithful, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, that he's always there, that he'll make the crooked path straight, that where there is no way, he'll make a way, and that he will direct every single step. He is the author and the finisher of our faith, ultimately. And therefore, we surrender to him with absolutely every aspect and fiber of our lives and we should do that we allow god entrance so in every matter in every circumstance and everything whether it be family relationships whether it be uh, financial situations whether it be uh, depression or mental issues whatever the circumstance may be whatever you you are fat, fighting whatever you are what challenges you are facing you have to make a decision as to is God in the, my life or isn't God? And you've got to give him first place. And you've got to renew this mind according to Romans 12, 2 and Ephesians 4. The spirit of your mind has to be renewed. We have the mind of Christ according to the book of Corinthians. That does not mean that God, Jesus' mind has been transferred into our mind. No. What it means is that through the Holy Spirit, you and I have access to the full thinking of Christ. He will fathom the depths of Christ's uh, thoughts about you and I, and he will impart that revelation, that knowledge to us, and allow it to come into our minds so that we have the mind of Christ. We have access to the wisdom and the knowledge of God through our relationship with the Holy Spirit in this particular life. So you and I have to come to a place then that we surrender absolutely everything in our lives, absolutely everything. And we have to allow the word of God entrance into our lives. So therefore, when the Bible says meditate on the word day and night, that is what we have to do. I personally, the best way I can do that and the most effective way I can do that is to memorize scripture. That was, that's what works for me. Maybe for you it might be slightly different, but you have got to work out what that may be. Because you have to bring that word into your life and you have to make it part of you. And who you are. So if you need to, to find First Peter 2.24 that says by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. And you need to memorize that thing and uh, repeat that thing to yourself all day, every day until you get your healings. Then so be it. Alright. That is what you need to do. So you need to then search through the scripture. Find what the Bible says about your circumstance and allow it to be applied in your life. That is how we become effective in demonstrating and living the life that Christ has already paid for and brought into our lives. So tonight, let me just repeat as we close this particular teaching. Our minds are not automatically going to seek after God. We have been through what happened in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and the fall. We, need, we have come to a place where we have a sin nature. So when we are born into this world, we are born into this world with a sin nature. The wages of sin is death, the Bible tells me. So our hearts tend to wickedness according to Jeremiah. So therefore we have to get our hearts renewed. That's step number one. We do that by accepting Christ into our lives and allowing the Holy Spirit entrance into our lives so that our bodies can become a temple of the Holy Spirit. So as we do that, we have now opened the door and we've allowed the Holy Spirit in God in to start working in our hearts and giving us a new heart. From there then, the next progression is that we start making God a priority in our lives. We seek Him first. Absolutely everything that's got to do with Him becomes number one in our lives. So that now allows us to build a treasure where our hearts go. Because the Bible says wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we can now start building a treasure and start focusing ourselves 
on the things of the Lord. Then the Bible tells me out of that treasure, out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouth, our mouths speak. So now, as we renew our minds and we allow our minds to be to be brought in line with the Word of God, we take thoughts captive that are not for God, and we bring them down. And then what we do, as we do that, we start watching our mouths. Because we understand that our mouths and our thinking influences the outcomes in our life. And as we do that, according to Proverbs 23, 7, Matthew 12, 34, all these scriptures, we now know that we have to bring our, our words and everything that we speak and declare in line with that which is inside of us. And as we do that, we will start seeing the word of God work out in our lives. Because the Bible says, these signs and wonders will follow the word of God. And your faith is established in your conviction. Excuse me, that which you are convinced about. And as you start building that together, you will be an overcomer in this world. You will be able to allow the power of God not only to work in you, but to work through you. And you will become an instrument of change. You will walk into a room and you'll change the very atmosphere because you have gained entrance. You've come in, not because of who you are but because of what Christ has made you to do. May the Lord richly bless you. Have an awesome evening.